the God of heaven. Blessed be the name of the God of heaven. I love it when the Holy Spirit just comes and messes up all our plans and, and programs. I just love it. We could, could just go on worshiping, you know that? In the future, there'll be times when I don't need to preach. We just need to worship God. Hallelujah. Amen. Something um, touched my heart. I was, praying, I was praying during this week. And something came into my heart. And I said, Lord, visit the works of my hands. Have you ever prayed that prayer? You need God to visit the works of your hands. Your works of your hands is a testimony of your faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. Last week I was speaking of being about your father's business. Doing those things that God called you to do. I want to turn your attention to the book of Galatians chapter 6. I want to tighten this message, Lord, visit the works of my hands. Ah, oh, Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name of the God of heaven. When Daniel and his colleagues, we'll get to that scripture now. When Daniel and his colleagues were in the king's palace, they had things that the young men were doing. And then Daniel said, but I cannot do this. I'm going to do things according to what God wants me to do. And the Bible says that these things were a testimony unto them and it set them apart. Do not be moved while going about doing the business of the king of glory. These things will speak for you. God will recognize it. Hallelujah. Just remember that. I'm reading from the book of Galatians chapter 6. From verse 6. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those who are of the household of faith. And as Paul was speaking to the people of Galatia, he was telling them that you must continue doing good works. You must continue doing the kingdom's work. And then you must realize when you are doing the work of God, when you are about doing the work of your father, you are doing spiritual things. You are, you are sowing in spiritual things. And he says when you continue doing these things, they will speak for you. You must continue. It's a promise. Sometimes we get weary, my brothers and sisters. Yeah, pastor, I've been doing this Christian thing for so long. I don't know whether God is listening. I don't know whether this God is hearing. He's hearing the brother next to me. He's not listening to me. Because it doesn't seem like he is there. But the book of Galatians says, you just continue. You just continue doing the things of the spirit. And in due season, God will visit you. And it doesn't say in the time of your heart. It says in the season of God, he will visit you. In other words, the works of your hands will become a testimony before God in the timing of God. Don't lose heart. Sometimes you've been trusting God for many years. Don't give up. You're about, God is about to come through. You just continue. Then we encourage you with this promise. We encourage that God will never leave us. And these things will speak for us. Don't give up praying. 
Don't think you're praying every day. God is not listening. He's listening. And he is going to visit you. Hallelujah. In the time of heaven, he's going to come. Don't you lose heart. Don't you get weary doing the things of the kingdom of God. There are many things you can leave, but never leave serving this God. Never leave worshiping him. Never stop praising him. Never stop praying to him. He's the ever, everlasting God. He will never leave you and he will never forsake you. Hallelujah. So this is the promise we get from the scriptures. And what, what is our part in it? How do we respond to these things? How do we respond to these, prayers, these promises? I want to read a scripture for you from the first book of Corinthians. The first book of Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 31. Listen to what the Bible says. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Once again, the scriptures are, are prompting us. Don't stop sowing in the things of God. Don't stop doing the works of your father. Whatever you do, don't you stop. Whether you eat or drink, but don't stop not drinking alcohol, drinking water and coke. <laughs> don't stop doing it for the glory of God. It may not seem good to you. Your flesh may tell you, but you're wasting your time. But you're not doing it unto your flesh. You don't worship unto your flesh. You don't pray unto your flesh. Your flesh, your flesh, your man, your, your emotions cannot understand the promises of God. You do it unto the glory of God. That's what Paul was saying. You don't stop. You just put your head down and you say that I'm going to read the Bible and I'm going to read the Bible every day. I don't care whether I remember what I read or not, but I'm just going to read it because the Bible says that faith cometh from hearing and hearing the word of God. And I choose to do these things. Whether I'm sick and whether I'm healthy, whether I feel like or whether I don't feel like, I will pray. Whether I have need or whether I don't have need, I will feed the poor. This is what Paul was saying. Whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. If you're doing it for the glory of God, you will never stop worshiping. You will never stop praying. You will never stop feeding the poor because you're doing it unto the glory of God. But if you're doing it unto the glory of man, you will stop because you need approval. You need blessings. You need people to acknowledge it. You're doing it unto the flesh. Paul says, do it unto the glory of God. Paul says, people will not know. They stoned Paul. They whooped him many times. But he continued doing it. He went to, to, the, to the people, uh, he was preaching to them, and he healed everyone. And there's someone calling him into prison and whoop him up. But the Bible says Paul did not stop in the prison, falsely accused. Paul and Silas worshipped under this God. And in the midst of their prison, in the midst of their worship, the God of heaven came and visited them. Their worship spoke for them. Their worship came before the God of heaven. Every good deed you do will not fall to the ground. These things rise up into the heavens, hallelujah, and they will speak for you. And they will testify for you. This is why we do it unto the glory of God. We do it not unto the glory of man. If you have ears, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying this morning. These things are spiritual things. Hallelujah. Let's read what the book of Psalms says. Psalms 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I do it unto the Lord. The things that I do, I do it so that it will be acceptable unto the Lord. The Bible says, my hope cometh from the God of heaven, the Father of lights. Every good and every perfect gift come not from man. Because the gifts that come from man are subject. But the gifts that come from God is eternal love. And then he's saying you should, you should give unto God. You should do things unto God and God alone. Hallelujah. This is our part. 
but why must we do these things, pastor? Why must we do all this? Can't just loving God be good? But I want to tell you, did you know I'm going to shock you a little this morning? That coming to church alone does not just open the floodgates of heaven for you. Do you know that heaven monitors your activities? Did you ever consider that the God of heaven is actually looking at what you are doing? Did you ever consider that? Mm. Everything, he looks and he monitors it. And these things go up to the heavens as a testimony before you. The Bible speaks of the prayers of God's people rising as an incense into the heavens. Every good deed, every work that you do for this God will not fall to the ground. It will never fall to the ground. It will give testimony before God about your servant. Let me prove it to you. Okay? Go to the book of Luke chapter 21 from verse 1 to 4. The Bible says that Jesus was in the church. And people were taking up an offering. Jesus should not be looking into that offering basket. Correct? No, why not? He represented heaven. The Bible says Jesus was not preaching the offering message. He was monitoring the offering basket. Pastor, where does it say that? The Bible says that Jesus said something. He said this widow gave so much. And those people gave from the abundance of their heart. So he was checking who's putting what in this offering basket. I want to let you know that heaven monitors everything that you do. Jesus represented the son of God. And when he walked the earth, he took the time to monitor what was being done. And that lady's offering, that widow's offering became a testimony of her faithfulness. We don't give unto man. We finish, take the offering so you can relax. I'm not taking up a second offering. We give unto the God of heaven. We're not worried what man thinks about our offering. When I come to church, I don't give unto men of God and women of God. I give unto the God, the, my redeemer, my provider, Jehovah Jireh. The Bible says that this widow's offering was a testimony unto heaven. And Jesus spoke of her. 2,000 years later, we're still speaking about her. That's what God wants from you. Because you must recognize that he is looking down. He is mindful of his people. You are not just doing religious things. When you worship, when you pray, pray as though the heavens are looking at you. That's why I'm so crazy for God. That's why I will not worry where I am. If I want to worship this God, I will worship him. If I want to cry, I'll cry. If I want to laugh, I'll laugh. I don't care what people think about me. I, don't, I will be more dig undignified before my God. Because I am not worshiping unto man. I am not praying unto man. I am doing it unto the God of glory. Your offering must be done unto God. A little thing. How can we do spiritual things unto God if we cannot do little things like offering? So God monitors it. Hallelujah. Amen. That was just by chance, Pastor. Let's look at another example. Take your attention to the book of Acts chapter 5. And the Bible says when the glory of God came upon the earth, after the day of Pentecost, that the people were moved and they started, they started to be concerned about the things of the kingdom. They, it takes you out of your selfish mode and puts you into a loving and giving mode. That's what the presence of God does. The presence of God takes you out of my house, my car, my job, my family and brings you into a place where you become your brother's keeper. Where you start to pray for people. Where you start to bless the poor man on the street. When you start to do things for the kingdom of God. And the Bible says in the day of Pentecost there came a mighty rushing wind from heaven. As of tongues of fire. 
And the first thing that started to happen is there was an increase of believers in the church. But listen to what I want to get to. They started to sell their things and bring it to those that had need. Your offerings are monitored in heaven. Your life of giving outside of those churches is monitored in heaven. Coming and doing things in the offering basket, it won't mean so much if you're not doing it outside. God is watching when you go past that poor man on the street. The other day I was walking, I was left the girls at school and I'm driving. And there was this poor man digging in the bin. And I, I went past, I said, God, please don't do this to me. It's peak hour traffic. You know what's Johannesburg uh, traffic, God? Please don't do this to me. God left me. I drove, he let me go one kilometer. And then the Holy Spirit says, turn back. I said, Lord, please, we had this conversation. But nevertheless, I had to turn back and go bless this guy. These are the things that speak for you. Because of that, when I come here, when I open my mouth, the God of heaven comes with me. He doesn't come because I am I'm special. No, he comes because I serve him. Your works will stand before you. When you stand before the fire of the furnace, your works will come and stand before you. It was not their holiness that protected Meshach and Shadrach and Abednego. It was they could, the works of their hands that said, we will not follow the rules of the king, but we will serve the God of heaven. It went before them and it was waiting. Oh Jesus, you better get a revelation. It was waiting for them in the furnace. God doesn't wait till you're in the furnace to come. God is waiting in the furnace for you because your works have gone before you and testified for you. Prove it, pastor. The Bible says when they opened the furnace, that it was so hot that all the guys died. The guys that came to them died. Because they were not of God. But when Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego went in that same furnace, it had not the power over them. God is not waiting for you to be wounded before he heals you. God is already with you. Because your days before that you served him, when you fed that poor man, when you went and prayed when you didn't feel like praying, those prayers are gone before you into the furnace, into the lion's den. I want to tell you something. When Daniel walked in the lion's den, he walked in a, in a place where the lions were already sensitized for him. But we think God doesn't bother about us. We think we're doing all these things because the pastor keeps forcing us to pray. The pastors keep forcing us to read our Bibles. Uh -uh. God is watching. God is watching what we do in our secret place. God is watching what we say, what we do. He watches everything. He's the all-present God. He is this God we serve today. He is not a Mickey Mouse God. He is not Hanuman. He is not Muhammad. He is the God that lives forever. He is the Lamb of God. This God we serve today. I preach not the gods of this world that cannot see you, cannot answer your prayers. I speak of the God of heaven. Jehovah El Shaddai, the living God. I speak of him this morning and he's watching you and he's monitoring everything that you do and he's not moved about your mistakes because he sees the good in your heart. You see, our prayers, our reading, it also covers us in our flaws and in our weakness. And anyway, God, they got moved by the anointing of God. Ananias and Sapphira, that's what I wanted to start with, isn't it? So they sold their home, but they said, I'm going to hold back a little bit. God is not fooled. He doesn't want a portion of your faith. He doesn't want a portion of your heart. You see, Ananias and Sapphira didn't want to give all of their finances. Some of us don't want to give all of our hearts to God. We don't want to give all of our worship to God. And we say, God will give you a portion. The other portion is still for the parties in the world. I still want a little of this culture. I still want a little of this world. 
give me a little God. God is monitoring these things. And Ananias and Sapphira kept, Peter told them, Peter said to Ananias, you read Acts chapter 5, Peter said, Ananias, why have you lied to God? And Ananias did not lie to the apostles because your giving is not unto the church. Your servitude unto the heavens is not unto man, unto God. Paul said, why have you lied to God? And you know what happened. I don't want to scare you all on Sunday morning. God monitors everything. Everything we do in our secret place. I hope a holy fear comes upon you right now. I hope a fear that will grip your very soul comes upon you now. Because it's this thing that will guard you and keep you on the straight and narrow before the Lord. Let's look at another example. David. <laughs> the first book of Samuel, chapter 13, verse 14. Samuel the prophet goes to Saul. He says, Saul, you have been rejected by God. God has chosen a man after his own heart. We have two scenarios there. A man that decided, I'm called of God, but I can sneak to the soothsayer quickly and get some information from them. God won't know. I'll trick God. I'll still come back home and pray, but I, I want to go and just check what the other side have to say. That was one scenario. The other scenario was a man that loved God with all of his heart. And he served with the innocence and the purity of the spirit. Two reports came up to heaven. The prophet Samuel was sent in response to the two reports. One report was negative and he was rejected. The other report was positive. Once again, we find through the scriptures that the God of heaven is mindful of your actions. Not to judge you, not to pick on you, but to bless you. The book of Jeremiah says, my thought for you is good and pleasant to bless you, to prosper you. That's why he's monitoring you. Because the kingdom of God is built on principles. And these principles either establish God's work or reject you from God's work. That's why he's monitoring you. Not to, not to say, I told you so God. is not a told you so God. He's a bless you God. He wants, to, he wants to credit your account. But the kingdom of God only operates on the principles of God. He cannot credit your account unless you walk and do things that he wants you to do. So he's monitoring you. Heaven is monitoring you. The book of Job... The Bible says in the first chapter of Job that things were happening in the heavens and there was a conference going on in the heavens. You read the first chapter of Job and, and the sons of God came and were giving testimony before God and the devil came in the presence of God and God asked him, now I'm going to scare you. And God, let me read it for you, it's better. Huh? Do you all believe me or must I read it? Just believe me. You go read the first chapter of Job. And God said, Satan, where have you come from? And you know what Satan told him? I have come from being to and fro on the earth. So there's another person monitoring you as well. As God is monitoring you to credit your account in heaven, the devil is monitoring all your sins so that he can put more weight on you and credit you for hell. There is something inside of you that God cannot just leave. He's monitoring you. But the devil knows your worth as well. And his job is to take you away. And then he came and he says, yeah, I've been around God. I got some stories to tell you about what the people were doing. Huh? You think they're holy. I'll tell you this, I'll tell you that. But God said, Satan, I do not monitor the flaws of my people. I cover it with grace. I credit what they do for my kingdom. By the way, have you known my servant Job? 
That's God's response to the enemy. God doesn't hold your wrong to you. He covers it with love and grace. He reminded the enemy of his servant Job. And he says, do you consider my servant? He's a righteous man. You see, Job's life was testified in the heavens. This is why we worship God. This is why we give alms to the poor. This is why we bless people. This is why we go and feed people. This is why we, we fast and we pray. Not to be holy. I want to tell you a secret, my brothers and sisters, that I found in this Bible. It tells me that there is none holy and none righteous among us. For we all have fallen short of the glory of God. But we are redeemed through grace. You don't do these things to act holy and righteous. You got an account in heaven. You got an account in the bank of heaven called Hallelujah Investments. And everything you do is a credit to this. I don't trade on the stock market. I trade in the stocks of heaven. Because the stock market will crash. But my account in heaven will speak for me. I don't know about you, but I'm building a mansion there. Y'all will check me out. Come visit me in Hallelujah Avenue. How are you going to find you, pastor? The biggest mansion. With my jacuzzi right in the front, I'll be chilling out. I'm just joking. Joe. <laughs> I serve this God not for silver and gold. Last week I told y'all, Paul said, run this race as though for a prize. What is your prize? Is the crown of righteousness. Heaven is monitoring you, my brothers and sisters. Do it unto the Lord. Whether you eat or drink, do it for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Simple. Amen. Let me move on. Let's look at some examples of people's actions that heaven was monitoring that actually spoke for them. Hallelujah. Um, the other day I was reading the Bible and I picked up the story of Dorcas. And I said, oh, that's where Dorcas got her name from. <laughs> so I'm going to preach about Patty's wife this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> the book of Acts chapter 9. Quickly, let's go there. The book of Acts chapter 9. It speaks of a lady called Dorcas. Hallelujah. Always wonder, Dorcas, where you got that name from, Dorcas? Dorcas restored to life. Acts chapter 9 verse 36. Record this, Patty, and play it to your wife. At Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works, number one, and charitable deeds, which she did. How was this known? So her, she was dead. She was in a storm. But her life on the earth, her good deeds went before God and spoke for her. It was not her righteousness. It was not her being the holy man and woman of God. Shakara, Sotele, Brondo. No, no, no. What you did in the time God gave you on the earth. These are the things that will give testimony of you in your time of trial. And remember our other friend, just to put some fear, godly fear in your heart. Our other friend, Satan, that is walking to and fro the earth. He's also looking for investments in your life. So be careful what you speak. Be careful what you do behind closed doors. Because these things I'm talking about is not before man's eyes. It's before the realms of the spirit. Yengando rasute. Listen to this now. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. Poor Dorcas. Not to our Dorcas, to this Dorcas. When they had washed her, they laid her in the upper room. And since Lydia was near Joppa and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent two men to him, employing him to not delay in coming to them. Then Peter rose and went with them. When he had come, they brought him to the upper room. And the widows stood by weeping 
and showing the, the tunics and the garments which Dorcas had prepared while she was with them. But Peter put them out and knelt down and prayed. And returning to, and turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, rise. And she, and she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. I don't know what your future owes for you. I don't know what this enemy wants to do in your life in the future. But I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God. Do the things of God that they will go before you. Who was this Dorcas? I never heard of Dorcas before. But she got the attention of one of the most powerful prophets God called. Apostles that God called. That Peter went. The last time when Cornelius called Peter, he needed justification. Why you want me to come? But now for Dorcas, he just goes. That's what God will do for you, my brother. It's not, what I'm trying to tell you this morning, it is not about, don't stress another moment about the storms that come in this life. As long as you find yourself doing your father's business, the storms of this world have no power over you. Because the God of heaven has seen the works that you do for him. Every time you pray, Every time you read the Bible, every time you feed the poor, every time you forgive someone that has done wrong to you, every time you do the key, the things of the kingdom of God, it is going before you, my brother and sister. It is going and preparing a path for you. Don't lose heart while doing good, for in due season you shall reap. Galatians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look at another example. Let's jump to the next chapter to, to our friend Cornelius. Hallelujah. What made this Cornelius so important? You may say in this church, what will set me apart from all these people sitting here? What is going to set me apart before God? It is not your tithe. It is not your big offering. It is the works that you do for your father. What you do before me means nothing. What you do before God means everything. What made Cornelius so special that God left a billion Gentiles and visited Cornelius' house? Why? I'm going to tell you why right now. Listen to this. Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. Listen to why God visited Cornelius. A devout man and one who feared God with all of his household, who gave alms generously to people and prayed to God always. It didn't mention Cornelius' money. It didn't mention his position. It didn't mention what, what people thought of him. God had a report of Cornelius. And it is God's report and opinion of your actions on the earth that set you apart. That's why God visited Cornelius. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? Now listen to this. The things which I speak this morning are not the things of man, but the things of the spirit. If you, my people, who are called of my name, if you will humble yourself and listen to these words, they will have the power to resurrect you, says the Spirit of God. It has the power to navigate you through the storms of this world. For in five years from now, this world that we know will not be the same world. And in those seasons and in those days, these things will go before you, says the Spirit of the Lord. Verse 4, and he, and when he observed him, he was afraid and said,
Love this God. Serve Him and only Him. And all those things that be not of Him, reject it. He's not worried about what you are doing wrong. He's worried about what you are doing right. There are many things you are doing wrong. God is not worried about that. The one good deed you would do will override a thousand mistakes. This is the heart of this God we serve. Yes, you may do things that are not of him. We all fall short of the glory of God. Someone's smoking, someone's drinking, someone's doing this, someone's got a, a addiction with pornography, someone's doing this, someone's um, got an anger issue, someone's got resentment issues, all our sins. God is not worried about that. He died for that. What he's worried about is the good that you are doing. My brother, don't wait to, my sister, don't wait to be perfect. In your mess, in your need, do the work of your father. It will cover the flaws of your flesh and it will give testimony before God. Let me come back to the scripture. And when he observed him, this is Cornelius, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, Cornelius, this is the angel speaking to Cornelius, your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before man. No, before God. Every time you pray, Every time you read the word, every time you feed the poor, every time you do things that man has not seen, it has been written in the books of heaven. And it will come and speak for you. It will testify for you in the day of reckoning. That's what stood before Goliath in David. It was his time in the desert, in the shepherd that he looked out for the sheep. His obedience to God went before him. When he told his wife, I will be more undignified before my God and worship him. His service and his worship of God went before him. When his son tried to steal his throne and protected it. This is why we serve this God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of 1 Kings chapter 3. I'm going to try to close. I need to pray for people today. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of God. Um, David. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 13. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the God of heaven. We we'll serve him until the end of time. Sorry, just give me a chance. It was the life of David. It was his servitude towards this God that set his children up. Your insurance policies your RA, your cars and your houses will all perish in the tears to come. Your children will eat it all up and it will be forgotten. It is what you do for this God in your lifetime that will go and testify for them. David that loved God with all of his heart and David was a was a charitable guy, always feeding the people. You know, David and his son, they always fed the people. 
Then God rocks up to Solomon. And he says, hey, Solomon, you are my choice for the next king. And then God tells Solomon something. He says, Solomon, I will bless you as I bless your father. And I will be with you as I was with your father. But I require one thing from you. Is that you serve me as your father served me. These are the things that will testify for our children. It is not my money and my gold. That will hold my grandson when he's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is my wife's and I sacrifice for the glory of God. It's like yesterday we in this hot sauna. You know, Palabora is the hottest, most uncomfortable place on the earth. It's like 40 degrees at 4 o'clock in the afternoon over there. But we left our children. We drove six hours to go and do the work of God and drive another six hours and come and preach here this morning. These are the things that will stand before my girls and before my grandson and testify for him when the enemy comes for them. My money, my businesses cannot talk for them. It is the God that I serve with all of my heart. It is the work that I do for my father that will go and stand before my daughters and stand before my grandchildren until our Lord comes it will go before them. Any wrong man that will try to steal their heart, it will destroy them. Don't lose another moment trying to be God. Just do what God is do, telling you to do and let him be God in your life. And everything else will fall into place. And this is what set David apart, the greatest king of Israel. Hallelujah. Last one and I close. Abraham, thank you guys. Abraham, he was so rich. But when Paul gave testimony of Abraham in Romans chapter 4, he said, do you consider your father Abraham? They didn't speak of the riches of Abraham. They spoke of his faith. And the Bible says that he did not waver in the promises of God. But he believed God. And what the Bible goes on to say is that because he believed God and did not waver at the promises of God, this was counted to him for righteousness. Every time you stand for this God, Every time you're in a storm and you will still say, I believe this God. I don't understand. Maybe you don't have what you want. Maybe your heart has not been given what you desire. But even in that place, your faith will testify for you. And Abraham's faith stood before him. I don't know where you're going, my brother and sister. I don't know what you're going through this morning. All I am saying by the Spirit of God is trust us, God. Don't lose heart. Don't lose faith. And this thing will go before you. Don't say, I am not righteous, Pastor. I have done wrong this week. I have said this. I have said that. God never asked you to be perfect. All God said is do what I tell you to do. That's all I'm asking today. You pray and you never stop. You serve this God and you never stop serving Him. When you're done on this earth, my brother and my sister, may men that stand in and women that are standing around that coffin crying over a body that you are not even there. In that day, may they sing songs of your glory, of God's glory in your life. May they not say, and talk of your money and your houses and your cars. In that day when you leave the earth, may those around you speak of the God that you served with all of your heart. Because that words will stand for you in eternity. Perishable things like silver and gold cannot give testimony 
when you stand in glory before this God. This is the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Unaltered by the lust of man. Straight from the glory of God to your heart this morning. May the God of heaven lead you. May the mighty Holy Spirit guide you to do the wills of heaven. He alone will lead you. Without him, you will never do it. Hail to the Holy Spirit. 